Antonina, how are you doing? Really good, thank you, Christina. Great. I know that like a lot of people out there know that you're the expert of the expert. You're the you're not just the Ukon queen. You are the the water. You know the expert that we can always come to you ask a question. So they a lot of people come to me and said and ask me if I can do an Ask Antonina YouTube segment. And this is why you're here. Okay. Um. And a lot of people submit the questions to me in terms of like uh, day in day out when they introduce people about Kangen water or when they interact with Kangen water, uh, how they can understand and utilize the water better. Better. If you don't mind i would have i have a series of questions that i would like to ask you one by one but first and foremost let me ask you the one that's most common that i always get for people who always first start with kangen water or for someone who just started kangen water business are you ready i'm ready okay all right the first thing a lot of people know that kangen water is alkaline water this is how majority new starter or lots of new user know kangen water is about so in terms of alkalinity, a lot of people know that we have a certain level. But the thing is that will we get to alkaline with Kangen? Because you know the range is quite far and it can even get up to 9.5. What is that? What's pH with our body? What's alkalinity with our body? Can you explain a little bit better for us? Great question, Christina. So there, there's a lot of confusion about alkalinity indeed. Um, what people need to understand is different organs and different bodily fluids have different pH. So uh, the body is always regulating it. So the body is always trying to find home homeostasis and it will regulate that based on the amount of electrolyte minerals and reserves that the body has so how much storage does the you know all the tissues have and be it muscle tissue brain tissue uh, bones all of those organs and systems have a lot of alkaline reserves in them that they will get from food that they will get from other sources and then when needed use them to buffer and neutralize a lot of toxic and acidic exposures so we need to have good buffering system and a lot of people are always it's kind of like a bank that they're constantly depleting and so if they're constantly consuming acidic substances that's the problem I have no problem with people consuming alkaline substances we're talking about you know fruits vegetables greens nuts seeds anything that has minerals and vitamins and phytonutrients we usually have if not during digestion post digestion we'll leave a lot of alkaline ash for us as a nutrients to for the body to produce antioxidants and alkaline uh, elements that will then help keep it in homeostasis. So as the body keeps in the homeostasis, it needs to derive all of these nutrients from different places. Um, and I think it's fantastic when we have something as this, a substance and the water uh, that we consume a lot that doesn't require any buffering, buffering elements and minerals and it's not depleting our bank all the time. So the reason we want alkaline water is because when your body is alkaline, your body is finally detoxifying. So there is uh, there are pH sensitive transfer proteins in all of the cells in our body. So cells are constantly eating; they're consuming things and they're excreting things, just like any life organism in the on the planet. Anything that eats has to has to remove, and cells do this all the time. So um, cells are consuming a lot of substances processing things, surviving, multiplying, fixing, producing energy, and then a moving waste out. The body, if the body is not alkaline, those cells cannot properly detox. So they become very hardened and very oxidized and become toxic and, and prematurely mutate or, uh, or die. It's very important that we have enough alkaline substances in both food and water so that we have enough reserves to deal with that need. When you look at the pH chart, and you're looking at all the everything that's on the green, blue, and the purple side, you will see that all of those substances are going to be contributing to the alkaline reserves. So we want to consume all of the natural substances that grow in trees and bushes and are produced by nature or God, universe. And then you want to eliminate anything that's on the other side, which is, or at least reduce any of the substances that are in the orange and reds and yellows, because what are those? Those are usually products substances, microwave substances, packaged food, um, dairy, wheat, and and meat. And I often joke about the fact that pretty much almost everything that's on the Canadian food guide pyramid in large amounts is highly acidic. And people need to understand that while it can be consumed in some amounts, in our society, we overuse it and abuse it. We use a lot of and, and consume a lot of substances that are very inflammatory, that are very oxidizing. So we need to reduce those substances and improve on our our fruit, vegetable eating in high, you know, high quality ones. I'm not talking about processed um, or in any way, um, you know, uh, toxic uh, fruits and vegetables as clean as possible. So definitely get as organic or as local as possible. Definitely clean your fruits and vegetables with your kind 
Indian water to get the highest quality. When those substances are consumed, then the body has enough reserves. And um, to me, when people are confused about, well, what, what about stomach acid? I'm like, the stomach acid is only coming on and turning on when you're consuming food and only for the purposes of digesting what that, 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 that food morsel that you're just taken in and digesting it after the fact. Um, it cannot be corroding muco, uh, that muco, uh, mucus layer and that protective layer of the, of the, of the stomach for a long time. It cannot be, it's actually a good idea to always give the stomach a break. That's why we don't want to eat all the time. We want to do intermediate fasting. We want to take breaks from eating so that, uh, so the stomach lining can um, rest and repair. Same as with the rest of the digestion. The whole digestion has, the whole tract has different pH. Just our digestive system alone has multiple pHs in different parts and different areas. For example, a very important fluid that the body produces that's very important for digestion is called bile. Bile is produced by our liver, and that's about eight to nine pH. So it's highly alkaline, and if we don't, you if we don't have enough alkaline minerals, um, we're not going to be able to be a healthy liver. We will not be able to produce bile to digest a lot of nutrients after as well. So uh, with bile production and that alkaline, um, this green alkaline substance, kind of brownish green substance that the bile that the body produces, uh, with that we are able to synthesize proteins, uh, digest and emulsify fats, uh, move out the colon, kind of lubricate the colon, and move things out of that of waste um, that are all, already been processed, you know, digested and no longer should be sitting there and putrefying and, and oxidizing the body. So um, the bile is very important. It's very alkaline and it's one of the most important fluids in, digester, in digestion. So if also if our cells are alkaline and our body has enough alkalinity, we're going to have good hydration uh, in all of the tissues and all of the cells and we're going to have a good capacity to, to clean up our digestive system and keep moving this through so nothing is putrefying and staying in our body too long and as I said if all of our cells are able to flush toxins better because these uh, pH sensitive transfer proteins are cleaning up all the cells all the cells are clean all the organs are clean and then all the fluids and the body is clean so to me it's such an important important aspect alkalinity is important hold on that's amazing you know you I was about to ask you a second tier question you even answered that second tier question I think that's super right on uh, it's an amazing answer it get me to understand I'm sure that people watch what your you just answered just get people to understand a little bit more about how important alkalinity is it's all about detox isn't it the body is acidic it cannot properly detox the acidic body will keep conge being more and more congested and this is what you see in a lot of uh, different conditions a lot of um, a lot of issues that are prolonged disease Diseases and disease models. You have this compounded toxicity, and this compounded toxicity will have a compounded acidity, and that acidity will create a lot of other um, side effects, essentially. Um, so, no, alkalinity is important. It's just like when people go on the IO, I was just going to give you an example as well. Uh, when people go on the green juice cleanses, or just think about people that ever, if anybody's ever met anybody who went on to raw food vegan diet, or anybody who went on the juice cleanse, uh, or to kind of juicing like organic fruits and vegetable juices. Uh, they will always go through a detoxification, which we call a, a healing crisis. Well, that's because the same, uh, uh, the same, the same um, things are activated. The same path was activated. Body becomes alkaline. It has enough hydration. It has got enough nutrition, and so the body is finally able to detoxify. Absolutely. Yes. All alkaline water the same, Antonina. No, th that's a good question. Thank you. So no, it's not. Um, just like I know you and I have spoken about before. Um, a lot of a lot of waters and a lot of companies out there are using um, minerals, alkaline minerals, to market the alkalinity of water. So the when it comes to me, I'd rather people have just filtered water and high quality supplementation that provides alkaline minerals, where you can actually look at the label of the supplement and see the ingredient quality. And, and then you know what kind of electrolyte minerals you are consuming. Um, I do not like it when the companies put the filters full of all this mineral pebbles. They never report on the quality of those minerals. They have no, they have zero responsibility or oversight, any regulation, regulatory bodies to tell you the quality of those minerals. So if I look at all this large and fancy, uh, you know, filtration systems or, or bins with all of these pebbles inside, to me, uh, that's almost... Um, 
I, I can't believe that it's actually allowed just because those minerals very often come from China, three cents a pound, uh, very cheap. Just because it's alkaline doesn't mean it's good for you. You have to understand what how that alkalinity has been achieved, what kind of quality minerals have been used, are they bioavailable, are they properly, are they organic or in an organic form, can the body actually utilize them? them and most of the time uh, those are not expensive minerals and so most of the time uh, people are consuming through their water with their water consuming this cheap mineral substances that actually can become very pollutant and congesting for the liver and kidneys this is where I have a problem because uh, kidneys again when we have a lot of those minerals and especially things like calcium um, in those pebbles and things like that it can actually cause falsifications and and kidney stones and a bunch of other issues I love how you just address it. You know, as a water sommelier, you, you're right on. We talk about remineralized water or purified water as GMO water. This is how, we, yeah. this is how I describe it. It's a GMO water. People know that from a nutrition perspective, GMO food is not good. Um, GMO water is not any better. We are natural mineral. We, 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 were, we were shaped or we were designed to drink natural mineral water. That's when it was first like uh, people was interacting with when we are talking about water. And the minerals added naturally. It was supposed to be natural substance. It's not supposed to be added. Now, Antonina. From a nutrition nutrition perspective, what is alkaline water and what's alkalized water? I know that alkangen water is not just alkaline water, it's alkalized water. What does that mean to you as a nutritionist? Yeah, um, great question. Thank you for bringing that up. I do love that our water is not chemically altered. So um, what I do like is that it's, it goes through fantastic filtration. We take out the heavy metals, the chemicals, and then the water with the minerals intact, original water, source water with the minerals intact, goes through ionization. And those minerals are enough to help and to help uh, with that I you know dissociation. And so our water is alkaline because we take anything that's acidic away from it essentially. So naturally occurring minerals are left behind, plus is all the hydrogen um, and other elements you have this naturally alkaline or alkalized water without any additives. A lot of companies will add chemicals or uh, I would say specific minerals to create that alkaline effect. So as I said, again, without reporting to you on the quality of those minerals, they will add minerals that would be very easy for them and very cheap for them to buy in large quantities and a very, very, and they never have to report on the bioavailability or the quality of that or a medical grade of that. And they can add any of them into the water at the at this you know as as you're collecting the water and you can do the basic pH test and it will show to be alkaline, but the problem is this that it's not verifiable. The quality of that is not verifiable. And an issue I have with that is that, for example, I know some companies and big containers and they have those those pebbles that they put on the bottom, right? I'm not going to mention names. And as they as they you know six months later, so when you just have those pebbles fresh, you're producing extremely alkaline water. Um, you're not sure what minerals there are specifically in what amount you're drinking and what they can do to your blood and, and bone because my biggest issue and pet peeve in naturopathic medicine is over abundance of calcium in a lot of the things because calcium is a lot more complex than it's sold to us and it can cause calcification in the arteries if there's no other elements to actually take it from the gastrointestinal tract or arteries into the bone. It can actually cause calcifications and issues with cardiovascular system of which we have a lot in our society. So we don't want atherosclerosis or high blood pressure. And so Calcium could be very damaging and very and very costly for a human life. So we, we need magnesium, we need K2, we need T3, we need other elements. So these companies can just put a lot of cheap calcium and create that. And the problem is in the beginning, there is enormous amount of those minerals. And then as the months two, three, four goes by, then a month six, there is barely any. So you go from this high highs to lows of, of delivery of those different minerals, again, quality of which person never knows. And I totally agree with you. You know, one, one thing that's very interesting is that it's not just mineral. Heavy metal is kind of a type of mineral. A lot of people come to me and saying that, hey, you know, Christina, uh, the alkaline, you know, tap water is actually so bluish, so it's amazing, right? But what they don't understand one thing is that through the rustic pipe, you can also get, because of iron there, because all other heavy metals there, your alkalinity in terms of like, in terms of like the, the pH shot, you're still getting something blue. But now you brought up a very important point is that how the water is being filtered 
and what is being added to it and our Kenyan water has nothing to be added to it and by norm you know natural mineral water we are not supposed to add anything to it because in North America we're trying to you know always on a fast pace so we're adding things on it and on it and on it again you know so that this is one thing that I really love about it so Antonina from all this water source that you have seen before, okay, will you say Kangen water and Nagix device is the only one that you would recommend as a nutritionist for your practice? That's the only one I trust. That's the only one I use. I have three machines for a reason. If I didn't believe in it, I wouldn't have invested this much. And having one at you know at each home and at, at my practice. Um, I, that's the only one I recommend and I feel comfortable and happy recommending because I know I can sleep at night and I've been at this for eight years, almost eight and a half uh, in terms of my research and about eight years in recommending this and I have never changed uh, my tune in the sense. I am confident and happy and, and you know, sleep, sleep was a lot of peace in my mind knowing that I have, I have done well for everybody who trusted me, so my clients and my my family. Very yes, nice. I, it. I uh, It's my favorite too. Like I have studied, as you know, like being a water sommelier, we study a lot of different filtration system. We study a lot about how people are making the system. A lot of people, you may not, a lot of people may not know that. I was talking with um, the executive director of Canadian Water Quality Association. If you, if people you may not know under uh, about CWQA, it's actually link, it's actually the same, the council part of the WQA. So whatever WQA approved is CWQA approved. Okay, I got the word from this executive director who was on board for 12 years with CWQA. He told me, literally, our future from our Kangen device is actually one-time approval. Versus for the other filtration system, they may have the WQA go still, but they, but they need to bring the thing back, alter it, be better, come back, and it's multiple testing before they got approval. But yet for Energy, our future is actually really gold because it actually uh, filtered everything out rightfully, exactly as what it promised, and before it go into our electrolyzed plates. I think that's an add-on for me that um, you know that I would recommend to my client as well. You know, I think that's amazing. Now, okay, yeah. in terms of water consumption. Will we be drink? Will that like by consuming Kangen water or energy, uh, energy Kangen water? Will that hurt our liver or kidney? No, so it won't. It will be okay with our kidney. What's the effect on our kidney? Yeah. So first of all, I mean, a lot of the times people will have issues with their kidneys, if, which is a very strong filtering organ. Kidneys is a very important. It's kind of like our. Uh, our skin is the third kidney, we believe, uh, we, we say in the naturopathic medicine, is that that we our lymphatic system is being cleansed through kidneys and skin a lot. And so kidneys are a very, very strong filtration organ, and very often, um, so our liver is a filtration organ as well. It's a very large organ, has 400 different functions of which we know of, and we probably there's a lot more. And then kidneys, kind of like a secondary filtration organ that uh, it, we, we strongly rely on. And so the kidneys, the liver and kidneys are very strongly impacted. And so we want a good functioning liver for the kidneys to work well and vice versa. Otherwise they have to take on, um, on a lot of, um, a lot, a lot of hard work, um, and they both have to be working in tandem, uh, for multiple reasons. So, um, kidneys, um, the problem people have kidney stones is because they're not sufficiently consuming water. So the problem is they're dehydrated and they're consuming insufficient amount of liquids or they're very acidic. And so what happens, there's a lot of built up, a lot of the minerals that come through and filter and, and the kidney has to filter, essentially stay in and start compounding. And you start the, having this calcification. So proper hydration is absolutely imperative to make sure that kidneys are filtered through properly, that your urine is lighter, that you don't have the congestion of all those minerals and so no calcification happens. So there is a huge um, relationship between uh, kidneys and and thyroid and 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 processing of calcium and a lot of other things. So, uh, but generally, just to tell you on, in in general, um, I would recommend that people consume highest quality water, and I do believe our water is the highest quality, insufficient amount for the body type, for the lifestyle, and for the needs. And when they do kidney stones are not going to be a problem anymore. They're, we have to be very specific when we're talking about kidney problems. It really 
I, I can talk. I cannot talk about in general because whenever I talk to someone who has issues with liver or kidneys, I definitely need to address both. So I would use herbs and certain supplements and helping with both organs. Um, I will definitely help lifestyle change, make some lifestyle changes to assist those organs too. And I would need to know a history of medications and surgeries and everything else to make sure that um, then I can give a proper individual advice for that person. But in general, if we consume high quality, clean, uh, alkaline, this kind of water, our kidneys are only going to be impacted uh, positively. Uh, so I'm not worried People, uh, when people with, uh, with kidney issues are consuming our water. This is the best water they can consume. And so there's lots of misunderstanding. And the company, Nagic, has to be careful pretty much any um, water device or any water filtration system or alkalizing system would have to be careful and put a warning on their products because when we're talking about kidney health and a lot of people that have kidney stones um, would usually have that uh, usually because of inorganic minerals so I would actually be really afraid when it comes to kidney uh, kidney issues and kidney stones when we're dealing with filtration companies that are adding artificial synthetic um, elements or um, minerals that are not uh, non micronized non bioavailable not organic inorganic minerals they can actually cause the congestion with liver I, I, and kidneys I did not have and see these issues with Kangen water, and I see people that only uh, benefit from this if properly addressing um, their kidney health and liver health with Kangen water. Love your answer. It's just right on. I actually, I have a lot of clients, uh, not a lot, but a quite number of clients who, when they are on this water, their kidney stone coming out within the first two weeks when they are really drinking sufficient amounts of water. So from a nutrition perspective, what is sufficient? Like how much water shall we consume each day? Mm, good question. So generally, we talk about the formula, right? We're talking about the formula, half the body weight in ounces. So if I'm 120 pounds, it's 60 ounces for my body weight and whoever whoever is applying it to them. I would also say be mindful. Understand that there's definitely, you always have to look and assess, okay, well, is this summer or winter? Of course, in the winter time, we don't dehydrate as much. We don't perspire as much. We don't maybe move as much as well. Um, so summertime right now is Vancouver plus 30. Um, a lot of people are having issues so you have you have to be high in electrolytes you want to be high in electrolyte minerals you want to consume alkaline electrolyzed hydrogen rich water to get through this really really scorching hot days where a lot of people are very dehydrated um, you would want to drink more so you definitely want to be intuitive with your body of course the person that is a couch potato versus the person that is an athlete a person who is you know, um, has a different lifestyle and depending on what their diet is like, we'll have to. Um, so it, um, a lot of the times, I mean, when it comes to my clients, um, I would, I would, I would be specific to a specific client. I will talk, we'll talk about the formula, uh, for them, but we'll also talk about their health conditions and how that may apply. But in general, I think if people are consuming, you know, um, their body weight in ounces, uh, half half of their body weight in ounces, I think they're going to do well. And then be mindful then it's okay maybe to have a little bit less in the winter. Uh, you definitely want to have as much or more in the summertime or uh, do, during the, uh, you know, very um, vigorous activities. So if people are exercising, if people are very, if people are under a lot of stress. So I would also say when people are stressed out a lot in their life, um, a lot of the times they make bad choices when it comes to eating and they're not, do not eat. Um, and in that case, um, whether they're overeating and eating bad stuff or whether they do not eat at all, at least do like a good, you know, stay hydrated. Um, and you'll need it more than ever because when the body is stressed, it loses a lot of water and loses a lot of minerals. It's just right on. And, and add, you know, adding on to what you just said is also about the diet. What we what have been we've been consuming during the day. It's not just about food. It's all, also about what kind of drink we have been having. Like, uh, you, you know, we live in the city. We, we, we go out to show show quite a lot. We may have wine. We may have coffee. We may have tea. You know, th with those things, we need to drink a, 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 a sufficient amount of that afterward to, you know, to balance it out. This is what, what, what shall, shall be done. But there, we, we will not ever, I, I believe, like we will not ever, if we are going up more than the half of our body weight, we should be okay at all, right? Uh, we should be okay. But as you said, like if you're drinking a lot of alcohol or coffee, that would not be sufficient. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I would, I, it really depends on how much coffee people are because that's a very strong diuretic and it really depends on the, so again, our liver and kidneys, we need a lot of after alcohol. 
So, um, and also was rehydrating our brain because what happens when people are consuming alcohol, uh, they compromise brain function, function quite dramatically. Um, people know that because they, 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 they get, you know, the brain is affected by, by the behavior, right? I mean, you can see that through the behavioral effect, um, but that's because um, the blood and oxygen and nutrients cannot be delivered to the brain. Um, the, the, the blood cannot pass through the brain blood barrier. So there's no oxygenation nutrient delivery. And so that's why we get drunk. But the problem is the body has to detox. There's lots of neurological uh, uh, you know, things that happen where uh, lack of lack of oxygen, nutrition, a lot of brain tissue can actually cause, uh, is, is, uh, is damaged. And so we need to flush that damaged tissue after. So we need to flush those dead cells after, um, after we've um, been drinking or binge drinking or whatever, after we've been, uh, a hang when we hang over or something, people need to drink maybe double of that amount just to recover and repair and rebuild. Agree, agree. For those people who may have hangovers, a little tips, okay? If you have Kenyan water, if you have, have consumed alcohol before you go to sleep, make sure that you drink uh, a good two full glasses of Kenyan 9.5 before you go to sleep. In that case, you wouldn't have hangover. I can promise you on that because been there, done that, okay? And um, <laughs> it's- Wake up and drink more. Wake up and drink more. Okay, so Antonina, speaking about hangover, right? We, You know we all add up. We have to consume a few drinks as we go. What happened to your brain? Why do we have hangover? Why do we have dehydration after we consume alcohol? Can you explain a little bit more? I know it's a little bit steering towards an uh, uh, our track. You said we have to consume alcohol. We don't have to, but when we do, <laughs> when we do, um, we, uh, to be most responsible and understand the process, so we really have to be just, okay, well, let's look at it with like, uh, a clear mind and assess the situation. I think a lot of people live in denial in under not understanding what what alcohol chemically does in our body. Uh, but for those who are interested, here's what, what happens. Um, you know how we use alcohol to disinfect surfaces? It's how we use them in the hospitals to clean things, to disinfect things, to sterilize things. That's because alcohol is so good at stripping that fat layer of all of those pathogens, viruses, and bacteria. All of them have this, have this um, let's call it a skin, or the layer that protects them, this lipid layer that protects them. So what happens, alcohol is really good at stripping that layer off, and that's how they suffocate and die. That's how we disinfect, or that's, that's how alcohol is so antibacterial, antifungal, antivir you know, antiviral, is because it disinfects things. So that's how we kill pathogens, viruses. Well, guess what happens? When you drink alcohol, that same alcohol, if it goes, we know that it goes right to the blood, right? It's very good, it has a good affinity. That's why we use tinctures with alcohol so we can deliver those things into the blood. So alcohol goes right into the blood. As it hits the blood, what about our red blood cells? Our red blood cells have a lipid layer too, right? Right. Mm -hmm. So as our blood cells, I know you don't want to hear this, but you're stuck with me. <laughs> so this red blood cells have a lipid layer. And what happens is when alcohol gets there, it strips that lipid layer off. So now imagine all of this red blood cells are distorted, deformed, and actually destroyed. And they start clumping. There is no more lipid layer. They can't slide through each other and run in the blood. They can't rushing into throughout the cardiovascular system, riding, rushing, because what the red blood cells do, they deliver oxygen to the brain, they deliver nutrients. There's multiple things that they're doing. So now those red blood cells are no longer slippery, moving down the you know, down, down your cardiovascular system, your your arteries delivering things anymore. Now this red blood cells are distorted, the lipid rays turn off and they start sticking together. So you have rouleau formation. I know you've seen some videos when you have this rouleau formations of if you saw dark field microscopy or uh, red blood cells uh, in, in the blood. So that's what happens, that starts happening to the blood. So it's very important for the blood to continue circulating and feeding the brain, right? And we bringing the oxygen nutrients. But now the blood is very clumpy and red blood cells are no longer, you know, those, those, this little, this little, um, the cells, they're no longer can penetrate and can come through the blood brain barrier. So they get stuck here. There is, there is this traffic jam. This is why when you're now, you have your brain not oxygenated and nutrated. This is the experience of being drunk. This is where your brain in different parts of the, there's different, <clears throat> so for example, depending on the frontal cortex, 
effects and all this. Uh, essentially, the person stops, starts having issues with movement, right? So um, you start having people that are, you know, this is why we're testing them for when people breathalyzer and all of these different tests are done by the police. We want them to walk straight and whatever. So we lose coordination. That is because we're no longer nutrating, oxygenating the brain, and so we, there's the, the you know activities essentially stop there. And but what happens even after a second, sometimes thirty seconds after depriving your tissues, a specific brain or neurons from nutrition and hydrate and, and oxygenation, they will start dying. So what happens? There's a lot of premature death of a lot of brain neurons. We have billions of them, but in one shot of vodka can kill about a million. And so what happens, the person gets drunk, the person comes home, falls asleep, in the morning they wake up, why do you think we have a hangover? Well, that's because now the body has to detox and it has to reject all the brain, all the dead tissue that has been deprived and essentially died or suffocated. All the dead brain tissue, dead brain cells have to be rejected and cleansed and pushed out of the brain. That's why you have a headache. That's why people feel discomfort. That's why people feel like nauseous. And then that's why the liver, kidneys under so much work and pressure because now the kidneys and liver have to process this dead tissue and debris and move it out. So not only the alcohol that they have to process, they actually have to process the dead tissue and that cells and regenerate. So there's a lot that's been taken from the body. I'm not saying not to enjoy alcohol once in a while. Uh, everything in moderation highest quality people can find so when it comes to wine and everything else um and and if they do you do drink what's important is to understand if you drink kind of water at the time you're drinking your wine or other things you're going to find that it goes down it doesn't cause first of all you're you're feeling much better during after and your recovery is much better. So if you consume all that hydrogen, that's phenomenal. First of all, it's it's alkaline and it has some minerals, uh, natural occurring minerals, and it has a lot of hydrogen. The hydrogen will help detox from all of this uh, toxic substrate, toxic uh, byproducts of alcohol, as well as will help to hydrate and oxygenate uh, the brain. Uh, and and we know that it moves really well through the brain blood barrier, so will help uh, will help to diminish that effect, and that hangover will not happen or will be significantly diminished because of how much and how well the hydrogen will take care of it. Amazing. Okay. I know, I know fully why you, you said don't drink, don't consume too much alcohol. You, uh, okay. You just scared me. Okay. But I'm, I'm super fortunate. That <laughs> it's important that we educate it. So we, we are more conscious of our choices. We agree. And, and I fully agree with you because the thing is that lots of time we try to select our uh, food choices, our drink choices or our lifestyle choices for pleasure. But we forgot one thing is that we, for our current pleasure right now, we're going to give away our future pleasure. And that's one of the things that I love about Kangen Water is that because it can actually help to tune a lot of lifestyle to the right part and we can, you know, we can reduce the chemical that we have intake. You know, um, this is one thing that I appreciated, how it changed my lifestyle, how you have changed my lifestyle uh, as a long run um and i think in that case i can last longer speaking about that you in your presentation or in your water demo you always mention a term called therapeutic value therapeutic right what exactly is that what, what do you mean by that can you explain a little bit about it yeah so in my in my in my talks i usually refer to okay there's a very big difference between regular water that will keep you alive and we all want h2o and this is why most of us are still here even before the kangen water we had sufficient hydration to stay alive there's a very big difference between staying alive and thriving we what i find interesting about our society a lot of people are just getting by and living or existing but they're not thriving so therapeutic value when it comes to water any water can give you some hydration and it will definitely be important that you consume any but if you want therapeutic application, if you actually, if somebody wants um, benefits, they could be found in, for example, nutritional supplementation or in herbal supplementation, all these other um, naturopathic approaches or people will call it alternative medicine approaches. If you want that kind of quality and application, you want to consume water that has therapeutic potential. So because this water has such a huge amount of hydrogen gas, which is the most amazing antioxidant found in nature today, 
um, and because it has it structurally and uh, and in in every way in every aspect, this water is so perfect at working with intracellular and extracellular uh, fluids and with cells itself. Um, it's so fantastic at permeating every cell, not only every cell but mitochondria of every cell, and powering those little engines in our side of our cells. Because this hydrogen in this water is so phenomenal, it provides the therapeutic application. So people can consume hydrogen as a supplement, but in this case, we have the best water that has the incredible amount of uh, delivery, you know, it becomes a perfect delivery system for a huge amount of hydrogen, which is the best antioxidant. So we know if we consume sufficient amount of antioxidants, we're going to achieve a therapeutic effect. Well, if we consume this, you know, a, a sufficient amount of this high quality water, any amount would help, but especially sufficient amount of this water with the amount of th therapeutic hydrogen that it has, we will get therapeutic results. It's just because this water has measurable amounts of therapeutic substance like an antioxidant H2. Amazing, amazing. I think I think we need to grab you back to talk a little bit more about hydrogen later, okay? This is one of the myth for lots of people. We'll get you to start on the hydrogen series. Now, well, speaking about that, you and I love one, one, one of the things that you and I love about Kangen or Enagic devices is medical grading, right? Medical grading, what does that mean to you? Have you ever seen other, I haven't, but have you ever seen any other water filtration system has the same quality or have the same medical grading or have the same ISOs? Mm -hmm. uh, no, unfortunately not. This is what makes me really comfortable when it comes to this uh, technology is that there's so many companies out there. And it's funny because I think you'll agree with me. There are so many companies now they're trying to, oh, they're trying to approve uh, ionizers for medical, uh, for medical purposes in uh, Korea or somewhere else. And I'm like, well, that's great. I'm glad that they are stepping up a notch. Let it, hopefully that industry will become a little bit more respected there. Maybe, maybe the quality will improve on a lot of other technologies. But so far, I haven't seen anybody who does it better. We know the Japanese are phenomenal when it comes to uh, quality production, manufacturing, engineering, ethics. So I have not seen anybody come close to when it comes to engineering, when it comes to quality of metals, we're talking about 99 point grade titanium, uh, you know, highest grade of platinum, nobody else uses that. To me, from the engineering medical perspective, there is no, there is nobody else, even if they're gonna get achieve, achieve maybe um, a good marketing ploy and do this, oh, it's a medical grade in Korea. Well, I'm sorry, medical grade in Korea, um, let's take a look at quality of medical system in Korea. And what does that mean or quality of, or ethics of, of the industry as a whole um, and let's compare that to Japanese there's a very big uh, there's a very big difference between the two so and, nothing comes close. and I, I agree with you to add on to what you just mentioned Anthony is that if you uh, if uh, for the, for our audience out there if you have compared or I have you look into other water ionizer how is our difference is not just through the uh, through our look or through our history or through how it's being crafted because one technician made one machine if we look deeper, I personally have, have dissect, have take a part of our machine, okay? Which I don't, I don't suggest anybody to do it because once you take a part of your machine, your warranty is void, okay? And not just so sophisticated that they put a little paper there. Once you bring it up, you can never steal it back. So they will know your warranty will be void. So don't, don't do what I did, okay? Anyways, so when you have, um, when you open up our machine, you will find something. What you'll find is that you'll find that all of the tubing is actually antibacterial. Anti they have no fuse and the nails and the screws or, or even the wire they use is actually top quality copper, top quality mineral, uh, top quality metals. When I open up another, our competitors, uh, you know, ionizer, which I did, what I realized and what I find is very different is that they have a fuse inside. I've never, I'm sure that Antonina, you agree is that I've, we have never seen any medical grading device in hospital that has a fuse and they use a fuse. And you know, in terms of they, for those who claim to have more number of play than us, okay, they do. But yet at the same time, their play size is actually half of our size. Okay. And they are mesh play, they're not even solid play. When you it's compare not, to- It's not what? quantity, quality. Exactly. Yeah. And when you, you, when you compare the weights of the two plates, yes, they have 12 or uh, 13. And we only have the most is eight. When you weight it, we are actually three times heavier than them. Okay, and and the interesting thing is that for for an ionizer competitor ionizer, uh, which is also made in Japan, which I've dissected a few, and when I take it out, which has been used for like three five years, what I realize is that they rust. The ionizer, the plate itself is rust. The nail, the screw is rust. Guess what? 
guess what we are drinking if we use those machines? And guess what we are drinking when we are using our machines? So it's a promising result that we're getting what we're getting into. I think that's super, super important in terms of medical grade and the three ISO. We, we have never seen any other water ionizer or any other water filtration system have all those three ISO. And I'm sure that no one has ever seen any other water ionizer made in Japan being endorsed by 6,700 doctors, right? Who yeah. actually well, that's a, that was a very big one for me because as a practitioner, for me to know that ja you know Japanese Association of Preventative Disease that has almost 7,000 doctors on board votes this technology and this company is a number one in class that speaks volume for me because i'm all about naturopathic nutritional orthomolecular health and so if there's a if there's an and japan is pretty good and uh and forward you know a very forward very strong forward thinking uh society um when it comes to medical approaches and and quality so to me that was a big one and as you said, International Standard Association or ISO certifications, there's no other company that has one, let alone three uh, of the certifications. So, yeah, it's, 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 con it's comparing, you know, how, remember how I told you one time we had a conversation, it's like it's comparing apples to oranges. In this case, it's not even that. <laughs> not even that. I, I would love to compare it like with a bicycle versus a Ferrari. Like yeah. it, it takes you from one point to another, but like how and what and what's the quality? Are you safe and all those things, right? And, and what you brought up is the quality. So when it comes to health, I have met people with heavy metal toxicity. So if you put, so now the companies don't use the highest grade above, we use above medical grade plates, right? So medical grade titanium is 90% titanium. Our company use 99.9 .9 grade titanium. So that's above medical grade. And that's not enough because they decided, well, titanium, even though it's one of the the strongest, least corrosive metals, it's still not 100% reliable. So let's double dip it in platinum. And we know how expensive and, 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 and strong the platinum is. So then they use platinum. Nobody comes close to that, nobody. Absolutely. And so, um, and that was not enough, right? To me, that, you know, as you said, like, so now you have the highest grade metals, and then you put the high, because what you need, you're not only the highest quality metals, you want the high quality charge. You want a lot of power through those plates. And if you have fuses, if you don't have good wiring, or if your plates are going to melt because you're putting a, a lot of pressure on them, and that's why they, there's a lot of limiting, you know, there's lots of limited warranties or small print in a lot of other companies, is but because we don't have to do that, your buying machine can work all day because it has the highest above medical grade titanium and platinum plates plus with a lot of power that's not going to break it down so we can actually we have the highest electrical power put through our electrolysis chamber that can produce those extreme 2.5 and 11.5 but those extremely hydrogen rich 9.5 um, nobody can come close to it. that's why they they don't have therapeutic amount of hydrogen in their water that's why they have to fake it with minerals that's why you can't use their plates all day long and you can't have your machines running all day long or can use it for industrial production and kind you can and I totally agree with you and one more thing that uh, I love what you brought up is that like in terms of like um, what kind of plates and what kind of water it, it brought out is a consistency as doing I have served machine that have been used for 15 years and it still produce the same quality of ORP it still produce the same quality of pH it's not depleting where versus when I'm serving the, 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 the uh, I've seen machine that have been used for three years competitors it's no longer the same O, the pH is no longer pH. The ORP is no longer the ORP. Because the majority of the client will do what? They are not going to be like us, use the ORP monitor, a meter to measure it, use a pH drop to measure it. Nobody will be as crazy as us to do this every day. But you know what, you, you're depleting yourself, you're not giving yourself an option. After all, Antonina always talk about, uh, she and I always talk about we are 75% water. And our cells and our blood are just 90% water. What are we filling ourselves in makes a huge difference, right? So in terms of that, like when we have this, when and also we have, you know, this 